Good afternoon and welcome to Dick Price Stadium in Norfolk, Virginia for today's MEAC Digital Network broadcast on ESPN Plus featuring the Spartans of Norfolk State University and the Pirates of Hampton University. Hello everyone, I'm Ross Gordon and today I am joined by Wu Bay Gabre as we get set for football action here in Norfolk. We're excited about the opportunity to watch two quality football uh, teams, one coming in 2-0 and in Hampton University, and the other one, Norfolk State, coming in at 0-2. Ross, crosstown rival game here at Dick Price Stadium. Like you said, Hampton comes in 2-0 and with wins over, over Howard and Tuskegee. The Spartans, two tough losses against Marshall and JMU, but it's a rivalry game here at home. First time since 2017 that we have the Battle of the Bay in Norfolk, so we're very excited about it. Exactly right, and there are a lot of players to watch out for here in Norfolk today on the opposite side of the field in white and blue. You're going to look at number 81, Jada Kiss Bonds, coming into today's game. Nine receptions for 213 yards, three touchdowns this year for Bonds, and he has the ability to change the game. Yeah, definitely an NFL prospect, Ross, 6'4", 200-pound senior. The past two seasons, he was an all-Big South selection, and he's a load on the outside, and we know what he can do. Last year, he had a great game, and he's, he's already started off this season with a great season as well. On the other side for Norfolk State, J.J. Davis, where he's number 15, is going to be the player to look out for for NSU. J.J., uh, after a solid season last year, was named the preseason MEAC Player of the Year coming into the season, and he has not had a great start, uh, but he's going to have to be key today for NSU. Yeah, hasn't, have, hasn't had the opportunity to really show what he can do yet. Uh, you know, of course, with those two FBS opponents, the defensive line was just pushing the Spartans offensive line out of the way, so... Today, J.J. Davis could probably get started with his running game and try to get some yards on the ground. The toss was won by H.U., and they deferred to the second half, so Coach Robert Prunty and the Hampton Pirates will kick off. Today's impact players are brought to you by Cricket Wireless, as we are almost set to go. Kicking off for the Hampton Pirates is number 36, Alex Perez. Alex Perez stands at his own 23-yard line back deep. To return the kick for the Spartans is Kevin King. As this kick is high, and King will run underneath it at the 11, fumble it, and pick it up and run the wrong way, and he's going to get tackled inside the 10 at around the 5-yard line. Not a good start, Ross, on special teams. Kevon King, the local product from Oscar Smith, bobbled it, dropped it, and uh, after that, this pop, the Pirates bounced on him. As the Spartans will come out, Otto Coons is your quarterback, and... Uh, Felton, Dequan Felton had a good game last week, uh, especially uh, when they found him. He'll start along with Chris Butler and Collis Pride on the outside. J.J. Davis will be your tailback. They'll stand at the goal line awaiting the snap of Brandon Hardy. As the Spartans come out, hand off to J.J. J.J. running right side. Still not a lot of room to run on first down. Picks up one yard, maybe two. They give him out to the seven-yard line. It'll be a second down and eight. Yeah, not much of a crease that time, Ross, for the MEAC Offensive Player of the Year in the preseason. But it's a good start to see if they can get that running game going. The Pirates will keep two safeties deep, two wide receivers to the near side, one to the far. That's pride. As, again, the handoff will go to J.J. trying to stretch it outside and loses two yards on the play. Quickly up from his defensive end position was, I believe, Justin Dinkle for the Pirates. And that will make it a third down situation for the Spartans back at the five-yard line. As Pirates with three deep safeties. Three down linemen as, again, the handoff goes to J.J. Davis. He'll run right this time. Cuts it out past the 10. Gets about seven on the play before he's taken down. Ali Shockley makes the stop. They'll bring up a fourth down situation, and the Spartans will have three yards to gain, and it looks like they'll bring out their punting unit. Yeah, that was a good close by Shockley. The redshirt junior defensive back comes up and and knocks Davis down after a seven-yard game. So Ramon Copeland will come out to receive the punt of Grandison Wilcox. 
excuse me, Brandon Wilcox. He has had a solid year. He will be punting from about three yards deep in his own end zone. Snap is good. Wilcox gets the punt away. It's low and short as he takes an NSU bounce out past the 50, and it's going to take a... Another four yards to stop, and it'll be touch dead at the 46-yard line, and we'll see Hampton with good field position at their own 46 to start this drive. Yeah, we'll also see the quarterback starts for the Pirates. It's been Malcolm Mays for the most part. And he'll get the start as he'll be joined in the backfield by Elijah Burris. He stands to his left. Two wide receivers to the near side, one to the far. Good to see Tavian Land back in the lineup as the handoff goes to Burris. Burris tries to bounce it outside, eludes one tackle, gets stood up after a loss of about one. Nice job there coming up from his safety position of stringing the play out by Stuart Anderson, and Land was there as well. And what you can do, I can do better. That time the Spartans on defense doing the same thing the Pirates did when a uh, running back tries to get outside. The Spartans are right there for the tackle. Three wide outs in the formation. Two split to the near side, one to the far side. As again, we see Mays in the shotgun. Burrs to his right. Play action. Pass is going to be complete. Just a tad bit too much cushion there. On a quick slant, we'll see Jadakiss Bonds get a first down inside Norfolk State territory to the 40-yard line where he stopped by Brandon Savage. Yeah, Bonds using his size and, of course, the cushion that the Spartans gave him. Easy first down for the Pirates. Mays connects on his first pass as it's now first down and 10 for the Pirates at the Norfolk State 40. Play action again for Mays. Mays steps back. Pass is going to be complete out in the flat. Just too much speed there as Ramon Copeland was the recipient of the pass. A pickup of about 16 inside the 25 down to the 24. And Copeland leads the team in catches. Now 11. Team high this season. He's the former Oscar Smith standout making a nice catch in the Spartans defense. There's a deep out route there as the Spartans now. We'll see two wide receivers to the near side. Copeland again is in Burris again is in the backfield. And it's going to be an option this way. And it's going to cause Burris to stop and he gets cut down after a pickup of one. Nice job of stringing that out. Making the stop is Copeland for, excuse me, Toler for Norfolk State. And look at Mays, 6'5", 195, running that option. And he better be careful. He's going to try to pitch that thing at the last minute. He took a nice hit. It's a pickup of one. Second down and nine for the Pirates. You see two tight ends in the formation as the play action again. Pass is going to be incomplete. Looking for... Copeland was Mays, but it was just a tad bit too far in front. And now the Spartans will force a third down situation. And Spartans will come out. And then nickel package, three wide receivers to the top of the formation. One to the near side. Two deep safeties for the Spartans. Burris in the backfield now to the left of Mays. Spartan show blitz. Now back out of it. No pressure. The pass is going to be complete wide over in the middle of the in the middle of the field and a touchdown for the Pirates. And Bonds with his fourth touchdown of the year. Bonds wide open. Over the middle, Ross. Nobody even close to him. Easy touchdown for the Pirates and Bonds. And so we'll see the extra point coming on now is Axel Perez for the Pirates. Trying to make it a seven-point ball game. As the extra point is on the way, it's up, it's through, and it's good. The Spartans trail 7-0 with 10.46 left to go here in quarter number one. We'll take a time out on the field. You're watching me at Digital Network on ESPN Plus and listening to NSU Football on the NSU Sports Network. You off air.
welcome back to Dick Price Stadium as Hampton leads Norfolk State 7 to nothing here in the first quarter as we get set to kick it off again. Axel Perez will kick it off. Back deep is J.J. Davis. He stands at around the four-yard line awaiting the Perez kick. The Spartans trail 7 nothing as Perez gets toe into this one, and this one will bounce and bounce and stay in the field of play. Davis looking for a hole on the right side, gets one, stays outside, and a flag is going to be thrown, and it's going to be in the area of a hold as Davis gets out past the 20, but the ball, the flag will be thrown at the 20, and it looks like we'll see our first penalty of the day. During the return, holding, receiving team, number 20, 10-yard penalty, first down. Jason Winuti. Uh, the wide receiver is guilty of the play, so the Spartans uh, will start this drive at their own 10-yard line, trying to respond to the Pirates' opening drive touchdown pass. But Jadakiss Bonds with 23 yards. That's his fourth touchdown reception of the season. As we see, again, J.J. Davis in the backfield. And Otto Coons will keep it up the middle. Coons will pick up nine yards on first down on the option read there. The boy's taken down. He'll break up the second down and one. Yeah, that's a good read by Coons, Ross. He's feeling out the defense. And of course, everybody's going to go with Davis, and Coons keeps up the middle. As Coons has two wide receivers to the near side, Davis stays in the backfield, looks to the sideline. Two tight ends as well line up to the far side of the field. Coons. Again, quick pass out to Tolbert. Tolbert picks up the first down and he's tackled immediately. Again, Michael Crawford there on the stop, but not before. The Spartans pick up their first first down of the day. Good to see Talbert back onto the field as he was injured against uh, the Dukes last week of James Madison. Coons. Looks to the sideline again. Davis will line up now in the pistol. Felton and Tolbert lined up to the far side of the field for Coons. That's Coons. Hands it off to Davis, and Davis is met at the line of scrimmage quickly there. Unblocked there was Bashan Townsend. Again, trying to get Davis established in this run game. Just not successful so far, Ross, early on. And they'll bring up a second down and 10 for the Spartans. Now as NSU sends three wide receivers out in the formation, two to the far side, College Pride in there, as well as, as it looks like Felton to the near side as J.J. Davis gets the handoff. Another solid run there by J.J. as he picks up seven on second down. They bring up third down. And we'll say three. Two nice cutbacks by Davis. You just see his ability to run that football. Good run by Davis on that second down. Felton and Pride out to the far side of the field for Otto Coons. J.J. Davis to the right of Coons. Quickly handed off to Davis. Davis up between the tackles. Makes one man miss. Gets taken down by his face mask. As... He picks up the first down, but maybe we missed something. Yeah, looks like a face mask from here. Because it was. As it's now a third down, first down now for the Spartans. Out past their own 40-yard line to the 43. Again, NSU trailing 7-0. Coombs in the shotgun. Again, Jalen White in the backfield for NSU. He stands to the left of Coombs. And again, the handoff will go to White. White in between the tackles, not much doing there. Tackle made by Jenkins, the defensive lineman for the Pirates for no game. White's a good compliment to Davis, the Phoebus product. It's good speed in between the tackles or outside for the Spartans in the backfield. Same formation. Second down and 10 for Coons. Two wide receivers to the far side. One to the near side. 
Collis Pride and Tremaine Talbert to the top of the formation for Coons. He drops back the pass. Pass is going to be complete out to Pride. Pride with a lot of room to make a man miss and does, but he picks up the first down inside of Hampton territory out to the 46 of the Pirates. You called it, Ross, a lot of cushion for the young receiver to make a play. It was too open. He didn't realize how open he was, but he still gets the first down. As Collins Pride loses his shoe. And he comes to the sidelines. Hatcher will replace him. As Coombs looks to the sideline. Play clock at 10, 627 left to go here in the first quarter. White stays in the backfield, and White will get the handoff, and he's going to get hit in the backfield, running to his own man, and lose a yard on the play. Good pressure that time by the Pirates. On Jenkins, closing in that gap and knocking uh, Jalen White to the ground. Second down and 11 for NSU Coons. Again, we'll send the two wide receivers to the near side, and we're going to back up just a little bit. As we're going to have a false start. False start. Offense. Number 55. Five-yard penalty. Second down. Baron Frank's the guilty party there. As J.J. Davis takes the spot of Jalen White. As the Spartans now have a second down and 16. Two wide receivers to the near side. Two tight ends to the far side. For Otto Coons. Davis stays in the backfield, awaits the snap, and he'll get the handoff running right side. Not much doing there initially. Steps in between a few tackles, gets out past the <laughs> line of scrimmage to the 45-yard line, which will bring up a third down and nine. Ross, you called it not much room, but somehow Davis gets through that seam and picks up, picks up some extra yardage after the initial hit. Third down and nine from the Hampton 45-yard line. As Pirates come out in the dime look. Six DBs in this play. Three wide receivers to the near side, tight end to the far for Coons. J.J. Davis flexes out in motion, and they're going to pitch it to him. Davis looking for a block, gets one, stays on his feet inside the 35 to the 30 before he's knocked out of bounds. And the Spartans pick up another first down, down to the 31. Ross, when you're a receiver or running back, to make that first player miss is key. That's what Davis did on that play. Gets past the first defender, gets out of bounds, and gets a first down. 443 left to go here in quarter number one. As Coons and the Spartan offense comes back to the line of scrimmage in the backfield now for NSU's Lex Henry. And Henry will get the handoff running left side. Henry runs into a wall there, gets to the 30-yard line. Actually, they're going to say he doesn't. It gets back to the line of scrimmage. He stopped there by Moore, which will bring up a second down and 10. Also in on the stop is Justin Dingle for the Pirates. As the Spartans come out, three wide outs, two split to the far side, one to the near side. Lex injury stays in the backfield. Coons awaits the snap, form the play clock, gets it off. Pass is going to be complete out the rough end. The blocker in front of him, he gets face mask. And he stays on his feet, though. Nice job there holding on to the football huh. by <laughs> Christian Butler. Yeah, Butler maybe got his face mask grabbed twice on that play. Still hung, hung on to the football. Yes, Crawford was the first person to get there. We'll see what the conversation is going to be. As we hear from our referee, Jason Soitzman. Personal foul, face mask, defense, number zero. Half the distance to the goal, automatic first down. And Michael Crawford, guilty party. And the Spartans will have a first down and 10 from the 11-yard line of Hampton. Play selection, Ross, has been really impressive on this drive. Every Spartans move the ball down the field. As we we'll see Lex Henry stay in the backfield, two wide receivers to the near side, one to the far. That's Collis Pride in the slot to the near side for NSU is Butler. 
As the handoff goes to Henry. He gets inside the 10. Gets down to the 9. So a pickup of about 2 on the play. He'll bring up a second down and we'll say 7. Henry that time in between the tackles. Coons held on as, as long as he could. Probably could have kept it. Got some extra yardage. But Henry got a couple yards on that run. As we see... Coons again in the shotgun. Two wide receivers. One split to either side. And Felton lined up to the near side. Looks like we're going to get some man coverage for both Felton and Pride. Coons going to lob it up for Felton. Felton can't make the catch. Good coverage in the end zone. Ball just went straight through his hands. It was yep. a good pass. Great pass. Felton usually catches that. Not able to bring it down. Getting good coverage uh, on the outside by Adam Akins. Really was beaten on the plate, but we'll see what the Spartans do here with 2.35 left to go here in quarter number one with a third down and seven. Lex Henry stays in the backfield. Coons, same formation. Play action, same play. Pass is going to be complete this time to Daquan Felton as Akins had a chance. But not anymore. Six on the board for NSU. Almost like a back shoulder play. Same play, same formation. That time Felton goes up and grabs it. He gets a touchdown for the Spartans. And the Cannons go off. So the best wide receivers uh, on both teams yep. get going early. Bonds with a touchdown for the Pirates. And Felton a uh, touchdown for NSU. And the confidence, Ross, to go back to Felton after he misjudged that for one prior. He gets the touchdown for the Spartans to make it 7-6. Wilcox on for the extra point. It's up. It's um, up and through. And the Spartans tie the ball game at 7 with 2.31 left to go here in the first quarter. Timeout taken on the field. We'll take it with them. You're watching the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN Plus and listening to NSU Football on the NSU Sports Network. All fair. Five, four, three, two, one. Just come in. Welcome back to Dick Bryce Stadium as we're tied at seven. Norfolk State to kick off. Wilcox will tee it up as the Spartans again moving from right to left on your radio dial and on your television screen. We'll kick it off back deep. Wilcox gets it up and it's going to be high and it's going to be taken at around the 10 yard line and getting hit hard. As he gets off, maybe to the 25-yard line, is Darren Butts. 
back up running back. And we'll take a quick timeout here as the clock is stopped at 227. We'll take a timeout on the field. You're watching MIAC Digital Network on ESPN. Welcome back again to Dick Price Stadium where your score is knotted up at 7, Norfolk State and Hampton. Here in the Battle of the Bay, the Pirates with their second opportunity with the football as Butts is in the backfield. With Mays, the quarterback, who threw a touchdown on his first drive as the handoff goes to Butts. A long, delayed handoff and stopped in the backfield was Butts, but he slid forward for a pickup of about three yards as Stevenson makes the stop for the Spartans. Yeah, Butts, eight carries for 114 yards this year, Ross, and one touchdown. A good, solid back, a local product from Suffolk, Virginia, Kings Fork High School. Stevenson, as well though, probably one of the biggest pickups for the Spartans over the break and transfer from North Carolina as again the handoff goes to Butts in between the tackles not much doing there he picks up one on the plate but the Spartans there Tyler Long also in on the stop for the Spartans Marquise Hall yeah those linebackers Ross's strength one of the strengths of the Spartans defense in there on the tackle as Mays quickly looks to the sideline and the Spartans are going to have too many men on the field as Copeland catches the football but he's not going to be short of the first down, the Spartans just a little bit late getting their personnel on the field. We have two flags on the play, and we'll see after the conversation. Stop number 26, Shabaya Williams. As Williams makes the stop, it's going to be a third down, but this time it's going to be short. Illegal substitution, defense, 12 men on the field at the snap. It's a five-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay third down. Be pretty much the same spot from where football was caught and where the conversation. This is an official sideline warning on Norfolk State. There's going to be a sideline warning against the Spartans. And Coach Odoms wasn't happy about something. Maybe as Butts is in the backfield, maybe he thought that there should be some time there as Butts gets the hand off the Spartans. Corral and Button and coming up, it's not going to be Butts, it's going to be the quarterback keeper in Mays, and Mays is hit behind the line of scrimmage, and that will bring up a fourth down. Nice job by Tyler Long and the Spartans corralling the offense of the Pirates, and they'll force the punt. Oh, that's great, that's great pursuit, Ross. First to, to the running back, and then Mays keeps 
Linebacker stay at home and get the tackle for loss. Jermaine Talbot will stand at his own 20. As Perez will come out to punt. For the Pirates, the snap is back. It's away. It's a high kick that Talbert will call fair catch at the 30-yard line. And that's where the Spartans will start this drive with about 25 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Nice stop there for the Spartans defensively. Absolutely, Ross. Great stop. Uh, after a touchdown from the Spartans, you'd like to see the defense step up and keep that momentum going. So now the offense back on the field to try to get some more points. 25 seconds remaining here in quarter number one. As we'll see Otto Coons come out, two wide receivers to the far side and one to the near side. Two deep safeties for the Pirates. As Coons has J.J. Davis in the backfield. And it was a little confusion in the backfield as Coons tries to step outside and slides down. And that'll be a loss of about three on the play. And it looks like that will take us to the end of the first quarter. Loss of three on the play. Second down, 13. As Coons turned to his left, J.J. Davis went to his right. And two seconds left, one second left. And that will do it for uh, the end of the first quarter. The end of the first quarter. Seven seven is your score, Norfolk State and Hampton. Here as we conclude the first quarter, we'll take a timeout on the field. You're watching the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN Plus and the NSU Sports Network. Off air.
Come on, man. Tell me. You want me to play something else? No. You sure? Uh, we have 10 seconds left. Five seconds. Four, three, going in. Again, welcome back to Dick Price Stadium. Third down and looks like 20 now for the Spartans. As, again, the handoff will go to J.J. Davis. Davis hitting the backfield. Carries tacklers forward for a pickup of about three. Maybe four, and we'll see punting unit come out for the Spartans. Conservative call that time for the Spartans. Third and long. Again, Copeland. We back. As Wilcox was standing at his own 10 yard line. Good snap. Wilcox will get this putt away, and it's a beauty. It will spiral towards the sideline, and it will take a Norfolk State bounce to the 26 yard line. And that's where the ball will stop dead, and another timeout will be taken on the field. We'll take that time out with them. You're watching the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN+. Plus. Okay, we're going there. Welcome back to Dick Price Stadium as Hampton back on the field with the football as we're tied at seven. Mays will be in the backfield for the Pirates, joined by Elijah Burris. Two wide receivers to the far side. Bonds lined up to the near side. Matched up against Toller as the handoff goes to Burris, rushing right side. Looking for a block, can't get it. Knocked down in the backfield by Tavian Land. Tank with the stop of two. Welcome back. Welcome back, Mr. Lamb, Ross. Good tackle reading that play as Burris had to bounce it outside Lamb. The Virginia Beach native takes it for a loss. They'll bring up a second down and 12 for the Pirates. As again, Mays lines up in the shotgun. To his left is Burris. Burris looks to the sideline, drops back to pass. With time, pass is going to be complete out in the flat. And... Reception made by Trent Cloud. Toller on the stop for the Spartans. It'll be a third down and two for the Pirates. A lot of space that time for the receiver. 
Toller does keep him short of the first down. Mays now four for five as the Spartans show blitz on this third down and two. Again, burst to the left of Mays, and it'll be an option run. This time, Mays will pick it up and more slides after he picks up the first down at the 43-yard line. And we're going to have a stoppage of play momentarily. The replay now. system is down. There will be no replay until further notice. Issue with the replay system. Yeah, that's how Mays with the key, Ross. For the first down. Had an option to pitch it to Burris, but he kept it. The 6-5 grad student gets the first down for the Pirates. Mays. Again with Butts in the backfield. Awaits the snap. Hands it off to Butts. Delayed handoff, but again, Tank Land right there. To make the staff ever pick up a one. It's been a welcome addition back to the lineup. Made just a couple plays on this drive. And we're going to have an injured player on the field for the Pirates. And that's Brandon Hardy. And Hardy will be attended to. It was in the wrong side of that play there. As the timeout's going to be taken on the field. And we'll take that timeout with them with 11.45 left to go here. In the second quarter, Norfolk State and Hampton tied up at two on the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN Plus and the NSU Sports Network. Welcome back to Dick Price Stadium after the injury timeout. It's a second down and nine for the Pirates. Butt stays in the backfield with Mays, who sends two wide receivers to the far side. Now, man comes in motion as Mays drops back to pass with time. Pass is going to be complete out in the flat. A lot of room to run. Getting taken down out of bounds is Kevin Johnson, the former Spartan of from Suffolk, and he gets the ball inside of Norfolk State territory to the 39. Well, the Spartans forgot about Davis. Went in mo I'm sorry, Johnson went in motion and stayed at home, wide open in the flat. Gets a first down for the Pirates. So now the Pirates go four wide outs, two split to either side, but stays in the backfield. As Mays drops back to pass, Mays pass is going to be complete to Johnson. Pickup of about three, so he'll bring up a second down and seven. Johnson knows the Spartans' defense fairly well. Former Spartan, like you said, Ross, local guy. Two consecutive plays for him. 
Bishops, two wide receivers to the far side, one to the near. That's Bonds. As Mays again with Butts in the backfield, second down and a long seven. As the handoff goes to Butts and he's hitting the backfield, knifing through to make the play for the Spartans. Nice job there by Shamar Hill. Nice pursuit again, Roth. The defensive line of the Spartans, something we haven't seen in the first two games, stepping up today against the Pirates. And just nice to see something different with 10 yes. minutes to go here in the second quarter. We're tied at 7, third down and 10 for the Pirates. As and fans still fouling in yeah. to nice. Dick Price Stadium as Mays. Nice crowd. Send four wide outs out into a formation. Butt stays in the backfield. Mays drops back to pass. Pressure coming. Looking over the field. Pass is going to be intercepted in the middle of the field by the Spartans. Inside linebacker. Nice job there by Marquise Hall. Making the play. It just floated back in the zones, and the Spartans will have a first down at their own 41-yard line. Floated back in the zone. Ross, like you said, Mays never saw him. He just stayed at home kept his eyes on the quarterback and makes a huge play for the Spartans defense. If there's anything Mays has done this year, he has thrown interceptions. So for every touchdown, he's thrown an interception and he comes back and does the same thing, keeps that trend going. And the Spartans will have the football after the turnover at their own 41. And Ross, like you said, it's so refreshing to see something different happen. A turnover an interception that puts the Spartans in good field position. And he threw that in the triple coverage there as the interception was made as the handoff goes to White and looking for space left side, nothing much doing. And again, pressure on Mays as well, Ross, made him hurry that throw. And again, the Spartans stop behind the line of scrimmage on first down. Coons, who's been solid today throwing the football. And the Spartans have been patient here today, not testing the secondary of the Pirates. Quick pass out to Christian Butler. Butler can't handle it, and that'll bring up a third down and long. And the Richmond native Butler had room to run. I think that might have been why he dropped it, Ross. Looked down the field before he put the ball in his hands. It'll be a third down and 12. As Coons looks to the sideline, three wide receivers to the near side, the tight end lined up to the far side of the formation. Jalen White stays in the backfield. Coons gets it off with about a second to spare on the play clock. And before that happens... We'll see what it's going to be. Prior to the snap, false start, offense, number 55, five-yard penalty, third down. And for the second time today, Baron Franks is hit with the false start penalty. It'll be third down and 17 for the Spartans. As Hampton expecting pass, Jalen White to the right of Coons. And he'll get the handoff, running in between the tackles. Keeps his feet moving as he's dragged down after a pickup of two. And there on the stop for the Pirates is Perkins. Yeah, another conservative call that time. From Coach Odoms and the Spartans. Defense playing well. Just want to try to pin the, uh, the Pirates back as far as you can. As Wilcox will come out to kick. As you see J.J. Davis being worked on on the sideline. We'll check on him as Copeland stands deep to return the kick. As the kick is short, nearly blocked. And it'll bounce. And it will be tapped by the Spartans. Daylon Long, the brother of Tyler Long, 
They t touches it dead at the 38-yard line, and that's where the Pirates will start this drive. That's really close to being blocked, Ross. Two Pirates near that punt. And a uh, good field position for the Pirates now as they get the ball. As Mays comes back out in the backfield, it's going to be Burris. Two wide receivers to the near side, one to the far. It's Trent Cloud who has a reception today. Mays awaits the snap, hands it off, actually keeps it, avoids one tackle, stays on his feet as he passes the 40 out to the 43 before Hall and Long make the stop. They'll bring up a second down and five after a pickup of five. They've been, they've been successful with that quarterback read. Actually, it's a new quarterback in, Christopher Zealous. Hands off, and Zealous will drive back the pass. Pass is going to be complete to the tight end. Tight end bounces off a few tacklers before he's pushed out of bounds. And that was a first down for Payson, and we'll have a stoppage of play quickly. Let's see what the issue is going to be. Has Officials have a conversation. Illegal block in the back. Offense, Offense. number seven. The ten yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Still second down. Couldn't be number seven because Malcolm Mays number 11. is the quarterback, and that's going to be Ramon Copeland who's guilty of that penalty. So it'll be up a second down and 12. Again, Christopher Zealous in. At quarterback, he's a freshman from Greensboro, North Carolina, out of Grimsley High School. Coach Prunty did say they had a competition still brewing at quarterback. As Zellis drives back to pass, looking downfield for Bonds and throws the ball out of bounds. Toller step for step with Bonds, and that'll bring up a third down. Good defense by Toller. Right in the, the hip. Of Jadakus Bonds not allowing him to get to that ball even though the ball was thrown out of bounds. Spartans with only 10 players on the defensive side of the ball now. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. <laughs> they need one more. 1, yep. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, they only have 10. You're right. I don't think anybody recognizes that. Somebody should there. Spartans are going to play this one with 10 as the handoff goes to the hands of the Burris, and he loses a few yards right there on the stop. For NSU is Anthony Bloom, just the way they drew it up. <laughs> that might have been on purpose. <laughs> 6.50 left to go here in quarter number two. And we'll see the punting unit on for the Pirates. Very encouraging, Ross, to see the defense step up this week. Playing good ball so far in this first half. Talbert will stand at his own 19-yard line awaiting the snap and the, excuse me, the kick of Alex Perez. Perez gets the snap. Spartan send a rush. This kick is high and short and will bounce and take a pirate bounce out of bounds near the 20. It'll be located right at the 20-yard line, and that's the where the play will resume after this timeout. On the field, you're watching MEAC Digital Network on ESPN Plus and the NSU Sports Network.
Welcome back to Dick Price Stadium as we're still tied at seven as Norfolk State will have the football. J.J. Davis back in the backfield. Two wide receivers to the near side. Davis the tailback and it's going to be Coons floating it out to Talbert. Talbert with a block. Nice block. Gets the first down yardage out past the 30. It looks like and they will give him credit to the 30 yard line will be a first down for the Spartans. Well, the Spartans have been successful with those out routes. In result of second and short now for the Spartans. Actually, second oh, down, first oh, down and 10 the for the Spartans. As Coons will line up in the pistol. Davis behind him. And he'll hand it off to Davis, rushing right side. Davis gets to the 29 yard line before he stopped. And he actually lost the yard there. First person there for the Pirates is Kashawn Moore. So bring up a second down and 11. And Davis getting some work done on the sideline. Back in the game. Good to see. Same formation. This flip the other side. As three wide receivers will be to the top of the formation. For Coons. Drops back to pass. Pass is going to be complete. Out in the flat. Making the reception for NSU was Hatcher. That's his first reception. And it'll bring up a third down and short for NSU. What a good pitch and catch Coons to Hatcher that time. Bring up a third down and two for NSU Coons. The shotgun, same formation now to the near side as the handoff will go to J.J. Davis. Running the wrong way as Hampton is there to stop Davis in the backfield for a loss of one. Ah. Uh. He's not able to get through the line. Good push by the Pirates defensive line to stop Davis on that third down run. So we see the punting unit come on down for NSU. Yes. Copeland stands at his own 30 awaiting the snap of Wilcox. Wilcox will get this punt away, and this one's a beauty that Copeland will watch bounce, and it will take a Norfolk State bounce to the 25-yard line, and we touch dead there, and Hampton will have a first down and 10 there with 3.45 left to go here in the second quarter. Again, defense playing well, Ross. Very good to see defensive line, linebackers, and the backs, the back end doing a great job of neutralizing this Pirates high-octane offense. Again, we see Zealous in on Clay Zealous. The freshman will empty the backfield. Looks over the defense. It's going to be a quick pass. The pass is going to be complete out in the flat. Making the reception is Cloud. Cloud picks up nine on first down. He'll bring up. A second down and one on the stop for NSU was Devin Allen. And Cloud, the transfer from University of Cincinnati to Cleveland, Ohio native. Another catch for the Pirates. Butts stays in the, comes into the backfield now on the second down and one. Zealous, hard count, drops back to pass and then takes off. A quarterback keeper picks up the first down and more inside Norfolk State territory before he stopped by Marquise Hall at the Norfolk State 46-yard line. Again, those quarterback reads and draws have been positive yardage for the Pirates today. And that time, Zealous right up the middle. The easy first down for the Pirates. But stays in the backfield. Zealous sends three wide receivers to the near side and one to the far side. We'll see... J.D. Kessel Bonds lined up in the slot to the near side. Might be a matchup issue there for the Spartans. As Ellis, pass is going to be incomplete, intended for Bonds, and he was looking right in that way where the linebackers vacated. The pass was just a tad bit too high. It'll bring up second down and 10. It's definitely a matchup nightmare when you put Bonds in the slot. 
Just a little too high for him to catch that pass. Again, 2.33 left to go here in the second quarter. Second down and 10 for the Pirates. Zealous with butts to his left. Sends three wide receivers out to the near side, one to the far. Zealous, play action. Looking in the middle of the field, finds his man, Trent Cloud. Makes the reception at the 30-yard line, enough for a first down. As Cloud was stopped by Ricky Harrelston, excuse me, R.J. Coles. And on the stop for NSU. Two wide receivers stacked to either side for the Pirates. Zealous drives back to pass and then takes off again. Picks up solid yards and makes one man miss and the flag is going to be thrown as Zealous makes it to the end zone. But we're going to have to be brought back as the flag is thrown at the 20 yard line. And we'll take it back. Holding offense, number 78, 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Replay first down. And where the flag was thrown was right where the cut was made. That right. kind of sprung zealous. The ball be spotted at the 32-yard line with 159 left to go here in this second quarter. You see the wheels. And zealous, another good run, even though it was a penalty. In the backfield now for the Pirates is Robinson as Zealous sends a man in motion. And the handoff is going to go right side to White, excuse me, Keandre White. And pick up of about three inside the 30 down to the 29 and bring up second down. 145 left to go. Both teams with. All the timeouts. Here's Beckett Irvine was credited with the tackle for the Spartans. There's a second down and nine for the Pirates. Bonds lined up to the near side. So is Copeland in the slot to the near side. As Zellers drops back the pass, sees the hole, and gets taken down nicely by Monty Bay after pickup of two. That's a good containment by Bay. Again, another quarterback draw, but Bay was there for the tackle. Sorry, that, that's Amadou Vital on the stop. Oh, Vital. And so that brings up a third down and seven for the Pirates with under a minute to go here in the second quarter. Again, all three timeouts for the Pirates. Is zealous. Burris in the backfield to his left. Play actions. Pass is going to be complete. Wide open is Pettis. And he gets out of bounds. After picking up the first down inside the 20 yard line down to the 17. A little play action that, uh, play action that time, Ross. Fake. Ruling on the field is what runner made the line to gain. Forward fumble out of bounds. Return to the spot of the fumble. It is first down. As Zealous will come back, Burris in the backfield. First down for the Pirates. Empty backfield as the pass is going to be incomplete and thrown over the middle. Looking for Bonds in coverage on the play was Joseph White. As Zealous was hit as he got the ball away. Good play by White, the UVA transfer, Ross, another local guy. 11 seconds left to go here in the second quarter. Again, you still can run some stuff over the middle. Yep. Because you do have timeouts remaining if you're the Pirates. As Zealous, again with Burris to his left. Four wide outs in the formation, two split to either side. And we're going to have a flag thrown. It's going to be against the Pirates. 
ball start, offense, number 81, the five-yard penalty, still first down. That was against Jadakus Bond, so that backs the Pirates. In the second down. In, outside the 20 to the 22. Now Jadakus Bonds again lined up in the slot, saw something he liked there with 11 seconds to go in the second quarter. Two wide receivers split to either side. Zealous awaits the snap. Drops back to pass with time. Now runs out of time. Steps up in the pocket. Trying to get to the sideline. He avoids a couple of tackles. And he's taken out of bounds with three seconds to go here in the second quarter. Again, with three seconds to go, we'll take a quick opportunity to send it back to the studio for station identification. You're listening to NSU Time football out. on the NSU Hampton. Sports Network. They're first of the half. Be a 30 Five second seconds. timeout. Number one, four, remain in the game. Three, two, going Houston back in. Hampton calling a timeout. In three seconds left. If the Spartans could have held that one out for a couple of more seconds. Sure. Might have had an opportunity here to run that play, run the clock out. Zealous, the young quarterback, has been effective using his legs here today. As we'll see, the kicking unit of Hampton come out. Axel Perez will tee it up from, we'll say, 27 yards and the right hash. Perez out of the hold of Ethan Lester. Brandon Richards the snap. Lester gets the kick away. It's high enough. It's long enough. It's no good. And that's the way we're going to go into halftime. NSU and Hampton tied at seven here in Norfolk, Virginia. We'll take a time out on the field. You're watching the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN Plus and the NSU Sports Network. All fair.
Pirates of Norfolk State and the Spartans of Norfolk State. The Pirates over the last couple of drives, though, have seen some, seen some things that they do like. Uh, you have to credit the freshman zealous for coming in and making some plays, especially with his feet. Yeah, yeah the, young, the young freshman coming in using his feet, like you said, Ross. Uh, after Mace throws the interception, Coach Prunty goes to his, uh, his other quarterback, battling for that quarterback one position, and he did a great job. But again, credit to Spartans defensively stepping up when they needed to to hold this to a 7-7 tie going into the halftime. And it's big for NSU offensively. They've sputtered a little bit, especially in the running game. Uh, they found some success in the passing game, uh, but everything's been around the line of scrimmage here today against this Hampton team. Yeah, you can tell the Spartans are trying to establish J.J. Davis and the other backs just not able to get what they're uh, accustomed to on the ground. And Coons has been able to find some receivers on the outside on those uh, on those, on those out routes. And, it, it, again, Coons has had a solid day. A lot of time for him to throw the football, not a lot of pressure here today for uh, Otto throwing the football. And that's what Coach uh, Odom said. If you give uh, Otto some time, he can spin the football and throw the ball down the field. Just have to give him some time in the pocket. He's able to roll out as well and find some receivers, in particular uh, Mr. Felton. And Daquan is the only touchdown today uh, for the Spartans. That's his only catch. But again, uh, you see where he's a valuable asset, especially around the goal line. Uh, last week, we really got going yeah. in the second half, especially in the third quarter, just getting him downfield. Well, he has both of the Spartans' touchdowns this season. You know, what I really like, though, the first time uh, 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 Felton missed time to jump, and they went right back to him, Ross, and he was able to get a touchdown for the Spartans. We'll take a timeout and come back with more on the Spartan Halftime Show. We're tied at 7 here at Dick Price Stadium on the NSU Sports Network. Off air. Thanks. Custom to on the ground, and Coons has been able to find some receivers on the outside on those, uh, on those, on those out routes. And, it, it, again, Coons has had a solid day. A lot of time for him to throw the football, not a lot of pressure here today for uh, Otto throwing the football. And that's what Coach uh, Odom said. If you give uh, Otto some time, he can spin the football and throw the ball down the field. Just have to give him some time in the pocket. He's able to roll out as well and find some receivers, in particular uh, Mr. Felton. And Daquan is the only touchdown today uh, for the Spartans. That's his only catch. But, again, uh, you see where he's a valuable asset, especially around the goal line. Uh, Last week, we really got going yeah. in the second half, especially in the third quarter, just getting him downfield. Well, he has both of the Spartans' touchdowns this season. You know, what I really like, though, the first time uh, 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 Felton missed time to jump, and they went right back to him, Ross, and he was able to get a touchdown for the Spartans. We'll take a timeout and come back with more on the Spartan Halftime Show. We're tied at 7 here at Dick Price Stadium on the NSU Sports Network. Off air. Thanks.
and knotted up at seven here at Dick Price Stadium. We have some great opportunities here today, and we will first start with Kina Higa. Higa, former uh, smart athlete, has some information for us here. Run the game from the runners in the lane to the jumpers getting drained. This and punishment and pain, the tradition never changed. In that shoe's finest, all we do is win. Competition, get the Heimlich. All they do is choke, and you know it ain't a joke. If somebody set a record, then the record getting broke. You better take notes, cause we never stop working.
it is with pleasure that I welcome to the show celebrated NFL player, author, speaker, CEO, philanthropist, and activist, Don Carey. So, Mr. Carey, thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Yes. So, first, I want to ask you, what really motivated you to come to Norfolk State University? Um, well, Norfolk State was the first university I ever seen. Right, so growing up, none of my family members went to college. So when we moved to Norfolk from Grand Rapids, Michigan, I went to Booker T. Washington High School. And you can see the Twin Towers from you know, the front. And a, a lot of kids would say, you know what, that's just Norfolk State. But I'm like, that's Norfolk State. You know what I mean? That's, mm -hmm. um, so I, I was blessed to be able to get a full ride and play football here. And, um, and it worked out perfectly for me. What skills did you learn in school that helped you in your NFL career that you didn't know would? Right. So um, in the BCT, building construction, technology field, a lot of your classes were at night. Okay. Right. So you had to learn how to study at unorthodox times. And once you get to the NFL, it's far more studying, like playbook, film study, classroom work than anything. Right. And it's, it's not your typical get there in the morning, you're done by 12 o'clock. You're there grueling hours of the day. I would tell guys, I'm with NFL players during the season more than I am with my family, right? So taking those late night classes uh, here at, in the BCC department, um, having to stand up in front of people and give presentations and be held accountable for it, those things really prepared me for the back office part of football that you don't see mm -hmm. on Sunday. Mm -hmm. If you're interested in learning more about our guest, then be sure to get his first book, It's Not Because I'm Better Than You, in which Don shares his story and the principles he's used to achieve success. Once more, I'm your host, Tia Monet, and this is Beyond NSU.
five, five four, four, three, two, go in there. Welcome back to the start of the second half, NSU and Hampton tied at seven. As the Spartans now will be moving from right to left on your radio dial. The Pirates of Hampton will be moving from left to right. As Wilcox will get this kick off, it's high. And we'll see Burris retreat back to the 10-yard line uh, to call for a fair catch. And the Pirates will start their first drive of the second half at their own 25. Ross Gordon joined by Wu Baker Bray here in the first half. It was a back and forth half as we saw Hampton score on their first possession. But nothing much since. The Spartans scored on their second possession, but nothing much since. It's been a defensive struggle today for both squads. Ross, you would have liked, uh, and I would have liked as well, for the Spartans to capitalize on that turnover. Huge turnover. Uh, got it up close to midfield. Weren't able to, to put any points on the board, but we stand 7-7 as the defense held as Hampton missed that field goal to end the half. Chris Zellis back in at quarterback. He leads the team in rushing. He has three carries for 37 yards. High snap. And corralled by Zealous as he hands it off to Burst. Burst gets back to the line of scrimmage where he's tackled. And on the stop is Tavian Land for the Spartans. Coach Prunny going to stick with Zealous to start this second half instead of Mays. It'll be a second down and 10 for the Pirates. Burst stays in at tailback. Zealous in at quarterback. Two wide receivers to the far side, one to the near side. Play action as the pass is going to be complete over the middle, breaking free and making his way towards the end zone for the Pirates. It's going to be Ramon Copeland for the second straight year. Copeland scores a touchdown against the Spartans. And quickly, on a quick slant, the Pirates take a six-point lead, 13-7. to seven. He showed his breakaway speed, Ross. Copeland, the Oscar Smith product, who leads the team in catches with a huge, long touchdown pitch and catch for the Pirates. Looks like he's going to go for 75 yards. There to the house as we see Perez, who comes on to tip the extra point of the hold of Jonathan Ward. As the snap is up, it's high enough, long enough, it is up and it is through the Pirates now lead 13, 14 to 7 here at Dick Price Stadium in a quick drive their one play was stopped at the line of scrimmage and it was a rush for burst and then a missed tackle and uh, the run to the end zone for Ramon Copeland who on the year now has his second touchdown reception And now gives the Pirates the lead at 14 to 7. Well, he has that big playability, just you know, going back from his high school days where he was the class 6A player of the year at Oscar Smith. And you see, Ross, you don't put a, a body or a hand on him and put him down. He can take it to the distance, and that's what he did. Took it to the house for the Pirates. As we see JJ Davis standing at his own nine. Waiting the kick of Axel Perez. As Perez walks to the 30, jogs to the 35, gets his kick away, and it's going to be deep and five yards into the end zone, and the Spartans will start their first drive at their 25. See what the Spartans can do to counter that touchdown from the Pirates. And both rushing defenses have been solid here today. As Christopher Zellis now up over 100 yards passing today after that 75-yard uh, touchdown pass. He's got his first TD. Now five of eight on the day. Otto Coons has been just as solid, seven of eight for 80 yards to go along with the touchdown. 
Two wide receivers to the deer side, one to the far, and the one incompletion he had was dropped. As Davis stays in the backfield, man in motion. As Davis gets the handoff rushing right side, he's going to get taken down in the backfield. Again, good pursuit by the Pirates. And a little stretch play, and Davis is tackled for a loss as he's talking to his offensive line. It might have been a missed assignment or a communication error that time. Tackle made by Kentrell Groom. Loss of six. It'll be second down and 16. And this has been, if there has been any issue today for the Spartans playing, playing behind the chains, second down and 16 as Coon dropped back the pass. Pass is going to be complete out to Collis Pride as the defender slipped yeah. on the play. Adam Akins. And Collis picks up 10 of those yards back. It'll be a third down and we'll say seven. So give him credit of nine. Pride, the Dinwiddie, Virginia native, tiptoeing on the sideline, slips a little bit, but gets positive yardage for the Spartans. Same formation, just flip the sides of the field. Two wide receivers to the near side, one to the far. McCoon with J.J. Davis to his left. Low snap. Coon dropped back the pass. Pass is going to be incomplete. In and out of the hands of Christian Butler. Butler has pleaded to the official that he, he caught the ball. Butler. With his second drop of the day, both incompletions have come on drops. Yep. Two Butler's hands. So we'll see the punting unit back out for the Spartans and Grandin Wilcox, the freshman. We're going to have a stoppage of play. I think they're going to, even if they review it, I don't know how. Throwing on the field is an incomplete pass. That plays under further review. But I don't know what that does because the play was blown dead. Exactly. The play was blown dead, so I don't know how that works. Redo uh, the down, maybe? I don't know. But Butler was definitely speaking to the official to, to, to let him know he caught that pass. Uh, this replay is brought to you by Cricket Wireless. All replays here this season at home on the MEAC Digital Network is brought to you by Cricket Wireless. As the official, Jason Soitzman, and the replay officials up top have a conversation. It's still going on. Again, the Pirates score in two plays with 13.07 left to go in the third quarter. They take a 14-7 lead. And we'll see how this play sort of ends up. And again, yeah. you have to like what the Pirates have done offensively, especially since Christopher Zellis, the freshman from Greensboro, has come in. Yeah, Coach Prony during the week said that he was still trying to figure out the quarterback position. Even though Mays started, Zellis comes in and throws a touchdown pass to his playmaker, Copeland, for a big play. As... Replays now being shown, and it just got out to Butler a little bit late. Even we didn't see, you didn't yeah. see Butler possess it or not. Uh, have to look at a couple of different angles. One, the one thing's for sure, he didn't have enough for the first down, right? Where he caught it, but I don't know if you blow the play dead, if you get to play, uh, do the play over again. Um, We'll go to our rules expert, Dean Blandino. <laughs> Do we have him on the line? <laughs> Not here today. Uh, Thirteen oh seven left to go here in the third quarter. Fourteen to seven, we know is accurate, and that's the score right. of today's ball game between the Pirates and the Spartans. As Butler, let's see if he catches it. Didn't initially have it. At the review, ruling on the field stands. Incomplete pass. Let's see. Fourth down. Oh no, that wasn't incomplete. That's not incomplete. No, not at all. I just don't think they had the angle to see it. He, he caught it in his legs. And I think what what happened might, might have taken too long to get to that place, but 
Yeah, they didn't. Yeah. We just saw Butler make the reception. But Wilcox will come out. It's going to be a fake and wide open. There's a lot of room to run for the Spartans. Picking up the first down and more. Making his way inside the 25 to the 30, 20. Down to the 15-yard line is tight end. Akeem Wright. And Wright gives the Spartans a first down inside the Pirates' territory. But a flag is going to be thrown. Oh, no. Great call. We'll see what the conversation is. It's either... A hold. It's going to be against Hampton because the Spartans are excited. It looks like a face mask against the Pirates. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense number 35. Half the distance to the goal be added to the end of the play. First down. What a play call, Ross. And a gutsy call deep in your territory. Yeah, that... This is an official sideline warning on Hampton. A sideline warning has been thrown now on both teams. As the Spartans will have a first down and goal at the 10. Nice play there by Akeem Wright. The Lake Taylor product, Ross, making his making his uh, debut a red shirt, at home. Yeah. A red shirt freshman. Looked like he needs more time in the, with the football in his hands. Outran some players. He did. But Hampton was confused on the play as the handoff will go to J.J. Davis. He tries to bounce it outside. He has the speed to get outside. He gets inside the 10 before he's taken down. They mark him down at the 10. As Shockley makes the stop. And the Spartans have been persistent here. they trying to continue to run the football, but Hampton has been up to the task here today. Especially on those stretch plays, Ross. Davis not able to get around the edge. Because of the pursuit by the Pirates. No gain there for Davis. As Coon looks to the sideline. As we see Stanley Garner matched up man to man with Daquan Felton to the near side. Coon looks over the defense. And looks towards Felton. Felton was open. Back shoulder, oh, man. and just not in the same page with Coons. Yeah, the, the defender went to the end zone. Felton stopped, and the pass was just behind him. Had him there, just couldn't keep it there. Brings up a third down situation for the Spartans. If you're the Spartans, you, you have to get some points out of this drive here. As Coons, same formation. As he has J.J. Davis to his left. Coons. Play action. Rolls out. Pass is going to be intercepted. Thrown too high. Intended for Keem Wright. And the ball will be taken away at the eight-yard line of Hampton. And that will bring up a turnover for the Spartans. That's their first on the day. As we'll see if we'll keep it here or not. We will keep it here. The Spartans still trail 14 to 7, 11.57 left to go here in quarter number three. Red zone. We'll take a time. We'll take a timeout here on the field. You're watching the MIAC Digital Network on ESPN Plus and the NSU Sports Network.
after the interception by Otto Coons, the Hampton offense back onto the field deep in their own territory at their own eight-yard line as we see Butts in the backfield. He's in the backfield with Zealous as Zealous hands it off to Butts. He might have gotten to the line of scrimmage, not much more than that. And that'll bring up a second down and 10. Again, the Pirates still trying to establish their running game as well. Butts not able to get much, but that can open up some things for the Pirates to go down the field with. Same formation, Bonds lined up to the far side of the field by himself. Copeland lined up in the slot to the near side for Zealous, who claps his hands, looks down the field, and he had Copeland, who makes the catch. And in front of Tyler Long, the Spartans say it was incomplete, but they'll move the chains. Copeland again. This time just finding a little space in the defense with a diving catch low, but he picks it up and gets the first down for the Pirates. And Zealous continue to moving, continue to move this Pirate offense. As Zealous, high snap, hands it off to Butts, running left side. Butts gets his legs cut from under him. After a pickup of one, maybe two, Marquise Hall there for NSU, for the Spartans on the stop. And we've seen a few high snaps. Zealous, with his height, able to get those high snaps and make positive plays out of it. And Zealous looks towards the sideline now with 10.34 left to go. Here in the... Third quarter, 14-7 is your score. Hampton with the touchdown lead. Zealous. Hands it off again and again. Taken down at the line of scrimmage is Butts this time. A nice job there by Tavian Land. Again, Land having a good game today. With some key tackles for the Spartans on defense. Zealous today, 6 of 9. He has 138 yards and a touchdown. Throwing the football is a third down and 8. Two wide receivers to the far side, one to the near. As Zealous drops back to pass. Zealous with time steps up in the pocket. Rolls left. And he's going to get taken down out of bounds. Nice job there by Tyler Long. And Zealous is going to get sacked. For the first time today, and did a nice job of not throwing the ball in the coverage. But it will bring up a fourth down situation, and we'll see Tremaine Talbert back deep for the Spartans in punt return. For the punt return, first half we saw the Pirates scoring their first possession easily. The Spartans didn't in the second possession they scored. Let's see if, let's see if they do it this time. Let's see if the trend right. works out. Uh, here's Perez. Out to punt. As he gets the punt away. It's a high spiral that didn't turn over and will take a Norfolk State bounce out to the 44-yard line. And that's where the Spartans will start this drive after the timeout. 8.56 left to go here in the third quarter. 14-7 is your score. Hampton with the lead. We'll take a timeout on the field. You're watching the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN Plus and the NSU Sports Network.
They're awaiting the television audience in just a few moments. 14-7 is your score here at Dick Price Stadium. Welcome back to Dick Bright Stadium. The Spartans trail Hampton 14-7. Norfolk State will have the football as Talbert comes in motion as the handoff comes to Jalen White. White, pursuit in the backfield, makes two people miss, but can't get the third and fourth. Again, a stretch play. Hampton's all over it. This time it's White not able to get around the edge and get positive yardage. A loss of two on the play. And we will bring up second down and 12. White stays in the backfield. Quick pitch out to Tremaine Talbot. Talbot makes the catch. Gets up near midfield to pick up about seven on second down. And will bring up a third down and five. Nice block in there on the edge by Collis Pride. And that's been the most successful play in this game uh, this afternoon, Ross. And Talbert comes off the field with a, holding his left arm. His left wrist has been bothering him. And he comes off favoring that left wrist. As the Spartans have a third down and five. Nine on the play clock. Coons drops back to pass, looking in the direction of Collis Pride, who makes the catch back shoulder over wow. the defender, Byron Perkins, and the Spartans have a first down. Nice throw there by Coons, putting it where only Collis Pride can make the catch. Nice throw, nice catch, good coverage by Perkins, but Pride able to go up and grab that ball, Ross. Great catch, back shoulder. And if he could just stayed on his feet, probably would have been six as... White talks to the offensive line on this first down inside Hampton territory at the Pirates 26. The Pirates showing blitz off the edge. Mason King show pressure as Coon awaits the snap. And the pressure comes. Coon drops back the pass and he's going to get hit in the backfield. At that time, Coons just has to get rid of the football, throw yeah. it out of bounds. Whatever, that time you took a loss of about nine back to the 35-yard line. It'll be a second down and 19. And you talked about, you know, the Spartans playing behind the chains. That time, you're right, Coons. He's got to eat that one and just throw it away. As Coons will get the play to the offensive lineman. Good to see Tremaine Talbert back in the formation three down linemen for the pirates as Jalen white gets a handoff in between the tackles big hole for him gets inside the 25 and connects helmets at the 23 yard line which will bring up a third down and we'll say seven it clearly white's best run of the afternoon good blocking up front as the spartans have a third down and seven the 540 left to go here in the third quarter, 14-7 is your score. Hampton leading the Spartans with three wide receivers to the near side for Coons. He drops back the pass, going to fling it out to White. White gets near the 20. It's going to be about six yards short of the first down. Another one of those flare patterns. That time White out of the backfield. It's going to be fourth down decision time. It looks like they're going to... Keep their offense on the field here, fourth down, and we'll say six. I like it, Ross. Stay aggressive. You're down seven. Second time in the in the uh, red zone in this half. Coon sends three wide receivers out to the far side. White stays in the backfield. Play action. Coon looking down the middle of the field for Talbert, and he's sandwiched in between two players. And it's incomplete. Don't over his head. That'll bring up fourth down. A turnover on downs, and that'll bring up a timeout. We'll take that timeout on the field. You're watching MIAC Digital Network on the ESPN Plus and the NSU Sports Network.
We got 30 seconds. Well, we're back. Welcome back to Dick Price Stadium, 1470 to score Hampton with the seven point lead over the Spartans. As we see again, Zealous back in the lineup. Zealous drops back to pass, steps up in the pocket again on the quarterback keeper, gets stripped up by Tyler Long after a pickup of about six on the play. Maybe five. We'll give him credit for five. Tyler Long makes the stop at the 27-yard line. It'll bring up a second down and five. If Tyler Long didn't make that shoestring tackle, Zealous might have been still running. Good tackle by Long from his linebacker position to pull down Zealous. Four wideouts in the formation. Burris in the backfield. Kevin Johnson in lines up in the slot to the near side. Zealous claps his hand, drops back to pass. Pass is going to be incomplete. As it short hops his intended receiver, Trent Cloud. Pressure that time from the interior. I haven't seen much of that, but good sign to give Zealous some pressure. He threw the ball a little too, little too quick, a little too early, quicker than he would like. Again, four wideouts in the formation, two split to either side. In the slot to the near side is Ramon Copeland. Jadakiss Bonds in the slot to the far side. Burr stays in the backfield. Spartan showing blitz off the edge with Tyler Long. Let's see if the pressure comes. It is on the way as the pass is going to be intercepted. Coming up and making the stop and making the play for the Spartan is the UVA transfer Joseph White as he steps in front of Bonds and makes the interception inside of Hampton territory at the 39-yard line. That's a veteran play, Ross. He baited the quarterback into throwing that pass. He comes up from his safety position. The UVA transfer, like you said, Ross, Joe White from Lanstown High School, Virginia Beach. Another turnover for the Spartans. And so that's the second interception of the day thrown by the Pirates. As we see the Spartans back on the field offensively. As Coons comes back after throwing an interception on the last possession for the Spartans with J.J. Davis in the backfield. He hands it to Davis. Davis stops and stutters in the backfield, gets back to, no, he doesn't give him credit for the line of scrimmage. He loses a yard. Again, you have to capitalize on, this, on these turnovers, Ross. In pirate territory. As it's a... Uh, Second down now for the Spartans as the ball will be spotted at the 40. They need a long 10 to get to the 29 and a half yard line for the first bunch set on the top of the formation for Coons. Again, hands it off to J.J. Davis. No room again for J.J. He stopped in the backfield officially this time. Another one of those stretch plays that time. Davis, again, not able to get open and find any creases as the Pirates' defensive line crushes Davis to the ground. And so that brings up a third down and 14. Four wide outs in the formation. Two split to either side. Coon looks to the sideline. As he drops back. Hands it off to J.J. Davis. Stretch play. He gets back to the original line of scrimmage. But that's about it. And that will bring up a fourth down situation. And we'll punt here for... The Spartans will see Grandin Wilcox come out with 2.20 left to go here in the third quarter. Again, not able to capitalize on a great defensive play. You're going to pin your, the Pirates back deep, and hopefully the defense can cause another turnover or force in the punt. There's Wilcox. He can't handle the snap, gets it away. Did a nice job of just getting it away there, and it'll take a Spartan bounce. It'll bounce inside the 10. Nice job by Wilcox. It'll stop... Inside the five, and at the four-yard line, it'll be touched dead. Good job there. Yeah. Making something out of nothing, and a nice job by the wedge there, making the blocks. 
to allow that kick to get away. A lot of times, punters, they panic. And they tuck it and run. That time, Wilcox stayed with it and still put the, the foot on the leather to get the ball down the field. So after the three and out, the Hampton offense right back onto the field. As we see Christopher Zealous back into the ball game in the backfield is Robinson. As Zealous stands around two yards deep in the end zone, three wide receivers in the formation, two to the near side, one to the far side. As Zealous gets hit in the backfield, as soon as he fakes the handoff and again making the stop in the backfield is Shamar Hill. We'll have a brief stoppage of play. Zealous lost his helmet. And so we'll see Malcolm Mays check back into the ball game. Mays, again with Robinson to his right. Two wide receivers to the far side, one to the near. Mays keeps it, and he gets hit as he gets over the five-yard line. Pick up about two on the play. That's about it. R.J. Cole's in on the stop for the Spartans. And Mays had that ball hanging out loose before he went down. It'll be a third down and eight. As the Pirates send two wide receivers out to the far side, one to the near, and we reinsert Christopher Zealous at the backfield. And it's going to be a quarterback keeper for Zealous. Zealous gets to the nine-yard line before he's taken down with 38 seconds to go here in the fourth quarter. Tyler Long there, also there for NSU with Stuart Anderson, and that'll bring out the punting unit. And I don't think they have to here. It'll be a fourth down and five. As you can wait till the end of the fourth quarter here to get this one away. Wait till the end of the third quarter to get this one away. <laughs> and they won't rush it. And the next play we'll see will come up in the all-important fourth quarter as the score now. H.U. leading Norfolk State in the Battle of the Bay, 14-7. We'll take a timeout on the field. You're watching the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN Plus and the NSU Sports Network.
Three, two, going in. Welcome back to Dick Price Stadium. 14 to 7 is your score. Hampton with the lead. Hunting from the end zone. It's Perez. He gets this one high. And Tremaine Talbert will call for a fair catch out of the 49 yard line. And that's where the Spartans will start their first drive of the fourth quarter, trailing by seven. Here's a look at the other games going on today for other teams in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. Scores from around the conference. Delaware State now leading VUL 28 to 9 at halftime. Uh, Morehouse and Howard knotted up at zero in the first quarter. North Carolina Central and New Hampshire will do battle at 6 o'clock p.m. And Morgan State knocked off Sacred Heart 24 to 9 to get their first win under their new head coach and of the season. Jalen Adams in at quarterback now for the Spartans. Quick pitch and catch out to the wide side, and we see Butler pick up five yards on the play inside Hampton territory to the 46 yard line. Interesting, Ross, to go to Adams in the fourth quarter. First play as a pass on the outside. As Adams surveys the defense, the transfer from the Citadel sends two wide receivers to the near side, one to the far. As Hampton crowds the line of scrimmage, Adams skips one out into the hands of Collis Pride. That'll bring up a third down situation. And how hard is that, Ross, to be on the bench for three quarters, come in in the fourth quarter, and try to make some plays to get your team to tie this ball game up? As it's going to be a third down situation now for Adams and the Spartan offense. As Howard Hampton crowds the line of scrimmage now. It's third down and five. Adams awaits the snap. Drops back to pass. Steps up in the pocket. Has the first down and a little bit more out to the 40-yard line as he drags tacklers to the 40 of Hampton. It'll be a first down and 10 for the Spartans there. Well, we saw it on, on Hampton's offense. Well, how their quarterbacks can use their legs. That time Adams didn't see anything down the field with his arms, so he used his legs for the, to get the first down for the Spartans. Adams right back to the line of scrimmage. Two wide receivers. One split to either side. Hampton expecting pass here. As they drop their DBs. As the handoff goes to White and rushing right side. And the hold's going to be called. And that one was pretty clear. Yeah, that's uh, unfortunate. Yeah. We saw that one on the edge. And it looked like. Holding. Offense. Number 54. 10-yard penalty. Replay first down. 54. 74, maybe. That's Bird, right? Kobe Bird. Yeah. And so they'll spot the ball back at the 50-yard line. It's going to be a first down and 20 for the Spartans. Like you said, definitely unfortunate. A good burst by Jalen White to get some positive yardage. But the Spartans call for holding. As Adams waits to snap, 13-14 left to go in the fourth quarter. Hands it off to Adams. Big hole in the middle for White. White oh. picks up nine. Signals first down there. <laughs> A little bit shy of the first down there. Bring up second down and 11. And that's what Adams brings, a different dynamic at quarterback because he can use his legs. So the uh, Pirates worried about his, his legs, and that way White gets an easy run. Same play. This time, Adams keeps it. Adams cuts it upfield and picks up six out to the 35-yard line. It'll bring up a third down and five for the Spartans. That time, Adams keeping it off of the RPO. Well, they give him credit to the 34. That brings up a third down and four. Three wide outs in the formation, two split to the far side, one to the near side. Adams looks over the defense with a hard count there to see if they jump. And we do see pressure coming from the Pirates. Adams hands it off to Jalen White. White 
Picks up one on the play to the 33-yard line. The Spartans will be about three yards shy of the first down. It's a key part of the game here, Ross, to keep this drive going. Fourth and about three. As fourth down and three. The Spartans are 0 for 1 today on fourth downs. 11.33 left to go here in the fourth quarter. Spartans trailing by... Oh, we're going to have a false start. And let's see if this false changes. Start. Offense, number 88, five-yard penalty. Thought process. Down. Uh, the Spartans, they'll keep their offense on the field. On well, this fourth down and nine now. Just penalties at the wrong time. Now you have, you have fourth and manageable. Now you have fourth and long. As we see two wide receivers to the top of the formation, one to the near for Jalen Adams. As he'll roll to the far side, looking for someone to throw to, keeps the feet and throws it into the hands of Daquan Felton. But Felton will be about three yards shy of the first down. And that will be a turnover on downs for the Spartans offensively. And a timeout will be taken on the field. Norfolk State trailing 14 to 7. We'll take a timeout. You are watching the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN Plus and the NSU Sports Network. Off here. Welcome back to Dick Price Stadium. Hampton will have the football leading by 7. 11 7 left to go here in the fourth quarter. Zell is still in at quarterback. Two wide receivers to the far side, one to the near as Tyler Long nearly gets his second interception of the year as the first play on this drive is incomplete. Zealous was looking for Ramon Copeland on the play that he caught a touchdown on last time, a quick slant. Uh, but Tyler Long read the quarterback there and knocked the ball to the ground. They say if you can't get to the quarterback, the next best thing, put your hands up. That's what Long did and almost had an interception. Four wideouts in the formation, two split to either side for Zealous. Burris now in motion. As Zealous on a quick screen gets it out to Jadakus Bonds. Bonds with a few blockers, picks up the first down and more as he gets into Norfolk State territory at the 47-yard line. Yeah, Bonds did a good job following his blockers after the catch. Savage in on the stop for NSU. As Bonds hasn't had a huge day. 
That was a big play there. Zealous on the screen there found his man. Zealous will have Burris to his right in the shotgun. Looks over the defense. Drops back to pass again. Looking up, stepping up, and he's going to get taken down at the line of scrimmage. Nice job there by Tyler Long. Call his name again, Roth. That time, pursuit on the quarterback, trying to make a play. He's there for the tackle at the line of scrimmage. That brings up a second down, and we'll see nine for the Pirates. Ten minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. The Spartans trailing by a touchdown. As the offense of the Pirates moving methodically here. Burris to his left of Zealous. Four wide outs in the formation, two. Three to the near side, one to the far. As Zealous claps his hand, drops back the pass, and it's going to be a quarterback draw. And he's going to take it for the first down to the 35-yard line. Another one of those quarterback draws, Ross. They've been very effective with that play in this ballgame with Zealous. The Spartans are going to need to keep the Pirates about in this area now with 9.22 left to go here in quarter number four, trailing by seven. And I know that's been a lot put on the defense here in this second half. Let's see if they can come up and answer the bell here. Zealous again with Burrs to his right. As Burrs gets a handoff, he stopped. Nice job by Tavian Lamb playing around the line of scrimmage. It's a pickup of about two. It'll bring up second down and eight. Yeah, Land has been doing a great job of coming up from his corner safety position at the line to make some positive plays for the Spartans defense. Second down and eight. And today, the Spartans have done a good job of keeping Hampton at bay on the on the ground, the pass game has been successful. Two passing touchdowns, one by Burris, the other one by Mays. Burris with the second down at eight. Hands it off to Butts. Butts tries to cut it outside and makes one man miss. Picks up the first down, lowers his shoulder into the chest of Joseph White. Picks up the first down inside the 25, down to the 22. Again, they had an opportunity to get him on that stretch play, and Butts eludes one tackler and gets more yards as he picks up a first down for the Pirates. First down and 10 for Zealous. Butts in the backfield to the left of Zealous. Copeland and Bonds to the far side of the field. We'll see Cloud to the near side as the handoff again goes to Butts. Butts. Now... Starting to churn away at this Spartan defensive front. Picks up nine yards. Stop on the play by Marquise Hall. But like you said, Ross, you're asking a lot for this defense. Already with two turnovers. And they're back on the field trying to stop the Pirates again in the red zone. As Zealous taking his time with 7-10 left to go here in the fourth quarter. The Pirates with a touchdown lead. Zealous awaits the snap. Play action pass is going to be incomplete as he took a hit. As the pass is intended for Trent Cloud. Coverage on the play by Devin Allen. And that pass is high because of the pressure coming in his face. Absolutely good pressure from the Spartans defense. Third down and two is... Burst lines up in the pistol. Zealous stands at his 20. The Spartans can use the stop here. Third down and short. Zealous, high snap. Takes a long time. He pitches it out to Burris. A long way to run. Picks up the first down, though. Yeah, that's that pitch. You're right, Ross. A long sprint for Burris. He has some good blockers, though. He's able to get the first down for the Pirates. First down and goal from the 10, it looks like, with 6.45 left to go here in quarter number four. Mm -hmm. 
Burris. Looks over the defense. Bonds lined up to the near side of the field. Zealous sends Bonds in motion. Pitches it off to Bonds. On the jet sweep, Bonds gets hit in the backfield. Keeps his feet moving as he loses one on the play. Good, good job by the Spartans. Recognizing Bonds in motion. He gets the pitch, and the Spartans are right there. Gang tackle on him. Hill makes a stop. It'll be a second down and goal from the 11. Clock still moving with 5.55 left to go here in the fourth quarter. Again, Norfolk State trailing by 7, 14 to 7. Zealous will send Copeland and Bonds to the near side. Trent Cloud lines up to the far side of the field. As Zealous keeps, he rushes left side, tries to bounce it outside. Not much doing there. Nice job of set the edge by the North Carolina transfer, T.J. Stevenson. Stevenson, you're right. Ross, good containment from the Phoebus Phantom and transfer from North Carolina to get Zealous to the ground. Third down and goal. For the Pirates. As... NSU might have to call timeout. And they will is as... Norfolk State, their first of the half. The substitution came a little bit late. And it'll be a third down, a fourth, the third down and goal for the nine for the Pirates. As the timeout is taken on the field, we'll take it with them. You're watching MEAC Digital Network on ESPN Plus and the NSU Sports Network. It's a third down and goal for the Pirates as we welcome you back to Dick Price Stadium. 14-7 is your score. Two wide receivers to the far side, to the near side, one to the far as quarterback is going to keep you. Rolling right and stepping inside and getting taken down inside the 10. At the 5 was the quarterback, Christopher Zealous. Zealous. Hit by Vital. After a pickup of two, and we'll see the field goal unit come out with 4.35 left to go. Ran 15 yards and get two yards, but good play by the Spars defense to limit the Pirates to a field goal attempt. Solid coverage on the back end as Perez comes on. This time from 24 yards out. A 
I think a timeout is going to be taken with 4.08 left to go by the timeout. Pirates sideline. Hampton, their first of the half. It'll be 30 second timeout. It's going to be a 30 second timeout. So the Spartans have already seen Axel Perez, the 6'1, 180 pound junior, miss one. This will be a huge miss if he could sort of get this one not to go through either. Yeah, we we saw him miss one Ross right before the half. If you take away that big play by Copeland, this game is still tied. One play makes a difference in this ball game as Perez gets set to kick the field goal. This one's from 24 yards out. As the snap is good, the kick is high enough. It is up, and it is through. And it's now a 10-point lead, the largest lead of the day for the Pirates. And a timeout will be taken on the field. 17-7, they just score 404 left to go here in the fourth quarter. We'll take a timeout on the field. You're watching the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN Plus and the NSU Sports Network. Off air. Yep. Welcome back to Dick Price Stadium. The Pirates take a 10-point lead at 17-7 with 4.04 left to go here in the fourth quarter. As Perez walks to the 30, puts toe to leather, and sends this one out. Well, kicks it through the end zone. Nice leg there by Axel Perez, and we'll see the Spartans come out from their own 25-yard line, needing two scores to get back in this thing. Yeah, Davis really wanted to return that one. But uh, Perez not having any of any parts of Davis with the ball on the kickoff. And Jalen Adams will take this drive here. We have first down and 10 from the 25. As Adam surveys the defense, three wide receivers, two splits to the near side, one to the far as the pass is short to J.J. J.J. dancing, gets about eight on the play. As Spartans will 
be in a hurry up situation as Falk makes the stop Adams back to the line of scrimmage same formation two wide receivers to the near side pride and Butler one to the far that's felted as Adams rolls to the side steps up in the pocket picks up the first down and a little bit more out to the 38 yard line where Spartans will have a first down and 10 327 left to go here in the fourth quarter Again, that's what Adams can provide, that extra boost with his legs to get the first down. Adams again surveys the defense on his first down and 10. Drops back to pass, pass with time. Pass is going to be complete to Butler. Out to the 45-yard line. And the Spartans back to the line of scrimmage. The second down and three, 255 left to go here in the quarter. Adams awaits the snap. Drops back to pass. Pass is going to be complete. Out to Felton. Felton stiff armed the man into Hampton territory. And he's taken down out of bounds by Devontae Davis with 242 left to go here in the fourth quarter. The ball will be spotted at the Hampton 48-yard line. Nice job there by Felton. Getting yards after the catch. As the clock moving, 2.30 left to go. Spartans struggling by 10. Adams will roll right this time. Not a lot of space. And throws the ball out of bounds. Good decision by Adams, though. Not trying to force anything down the field. Recognized there was nothing there. Threw it out of bounds. Stop the clock. 2.21 left to go in the fourth quarter. The Spartans trying to score quickly. Here to make this one interesting down the stretch. Trailing by 10, 17 to 7. As Hampton in a prevent look now. J.J. Davis in the backfield. Adams awaits the snap. Adams drops back to pass. Pump and go. Adams looks in the middle of the field, finds Pride. Pride makes the catch. After juggling it, it gets to the 45-yard line, a pickup of about three. That'll bring up a third down and long for the Spartans. As Jenkins makes the stop with two minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. Adams asking for the football, drops back to pass again. Pass is going to be complete over the middle. Picking up the first down is the tight end, Akeem Wright. But the Spartans have to move quickly here. With 148 left to go here in the fourth quarter. Trailing by 10. Adams drops back to pass. Pressure coming. Adams lost the ball into the direction of College Pride. Throws it out of bounds, and we're going to have a flag thrown on the play as well. Thrown right at the feet of Baron Franks. We'll see what the call is. Holding. Offense. Number 75. 10-yard penalty. Replay first down. It wasn't Baron there. It was Evan Gregory, the guilty party. So they'll back the Spartans up to the 46-yard line. So it'll bring up a first down in 20. 138 left to go here in the fourth quarter. Clock stop. As Adams awaits the snap, rolls left. Throws the ball in the direction of Felton. Felton can't come up with it, thrown above his head. And he was open, Ross. Open in that corner. Right here around the 25-yard line. Enough for the first down if he would have made the catch. Adams back to the line of scrimmage. Three wide receivers to the top of the formation. Collis Pride to the near side. And Hampton allowing anything underneath right now as Adams drops back to pass. It's going to be a screen out to J.J. J.J. is going to get slung down after pick up about two. 
Davis again, like you said, Ross Hampton allowing everything underneath. It took a lot of time too after the after the catch was made. And a timeout on the timeout. field. Norfolk State. The Spartans take their timeout. second timeout with 115 left seconds. to go in the fourth quarter. A 30-second timeout. And again, Hampton. A few big plays here today. Kept some drives rolling, including a 75-yard touchdown pass to Ramon Copeland, who has five receptions for 111 yards. And that seemed to be the key right now of the game. That slant route by Copeland to get the Pirates six on that play. Adams awaits the snap on his third down and long. Four wideouts, two split to either side. Let's make it longer. As Full start, offense, number 75. Five-yard penalty. Penalty is going to be called on Evan Gregory. And that'll make it a third down and 22. Uh, Third down to 22, yes. 1.15 left to go here in the quarter. Adams will send three wide outs to the far side and one to the near. Adams will run the option. We're going to have a flag thrown as the pitch is into the hands of J.J. Davis. Davis runs out of bounds, but a flag is going to be thrown. It was thrown early. Davis picked up about 10 on the play. It's going to be a hold against the Spartans. With 109 left to go here in the fourth quarter. Holding. Holding. Offense number 74. 10 yard penalty. Replay third down. Colby Bird, the guilty party. A third down now in 32. Oh. There's a play clock now at 10 for Adams. Th three wide outs to the far side, one to the near. Spartans have three seconds to get this playoff, and they do with about a second to spare. Adams steps up in the pocket, looking down to Felton. And throws the ball right into the hands of the Pirates. And we're going to have a couple flags thrown for some blindside hits. As the interception was made by Stafford Everett. Just playing center field on that one, Ross. Adams trying to make a play, but was intercepted deep in the territory. We'll see what the flag is going to be. It's all thrown at the 19 yard line. Turn to return. Personal foul. Blindside block. Deep oh, receive, receiving team. Penalize half the distance to the goal. Hampton's ball. First down. 17 7. Is your score as the ball will be spotted at the nine yard line with 56 seconds to go here in the fourth quarter? And that looks like that will take care of it as we take a quick look at the games on tap for next week. Uh, Norfolk State will hold, host St. Francis of Pennsylvania as the Pirates. Take a knee. Merrimack will be at Delaware State. Uh, UVL will be at North Carolina Central. And South Carolina State will take on North Carolina A&T. That's your schedule for next week. As again, halftime, Howard and Morehouse tied at zero. Morgan wow. State winners today, 24-9. to 
North Carolina Central will take on New Hampshire. Both teams are undefeated as the Pirates take a knee. And that will do it. So the Pirates will improve to 3-0. and The Spartans will fall to 0-3 here on this young season as Hampton will take on Delaware next week in their first CAA game. And the Spartans will be right back here at Dick Price Stadium, and they'll take on St. Francis of Pennsylvania. So the final score here from Dick Price Stadium is 17-7. Hampton knocks off NSU. So for Wube Gabre, I'm Ross Gordon saying so long from Dick Price Stadium. In Norfolk, Virginia, where the final score is 17 to seven. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN. We'll take a break right here 